In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Cartier Pasha fountain pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is the Cartier Pasha fountain pen. Now this is a pen that Cartier released in 1986, and this was sort of a higher-end pen that was part of their normal non-high jewelry line. So this was designed to be kind of a upgrade from the Cartier Vendome, like I reviewed previously. I'll put a link to that up in the corner. And some of the skinnier must fountain pens. This, I mean, if you just look at it, is a very fancy looking pen. I don't know what the retail price was back then, but I assume it was quite expensive. Now, walking through the pen, starting up top, we have this reeded gold-plated cap. I believe it's brass underneath it. We have a ruby-colored cabochon up top. Again, reeded cap here. We have the Trinity rings, which is a Cartier signature here, three colors. And then we have a metal clip, which kind of sits this way. You know, it's not the most, I would say it's not the most elegant looking clip, but it is spring loaded. Now, back then Cartier put a serial number on their pens and a date. So Cartier Pasha and 1988 and the serial number. I really like that they, one, put a serial number on these and two, Put the date that they were made. Just imagine how much easier it would be if Mont Blanc did that with their Meisterstück line. A serial number, they do have that on some of their newer pens, but there's no date, so dating some of those older pens is kind of difficult, but Cartier thought that it was worth putting the date on their pens back in the 80s, and I think that is a really, really nice touch. Now, the body here is lacquer. It's 40 layers of lacquer, which is a lot of layers of lacquer. I don't know what a typical Urushi pen has, but 40 is a lot. At the bottom here, we have sort of this gold cap. I don't know, it almost mirrors the cabochon on the top, um, but it's a gold metal trim. Now, it's a snap cap. We have, again, that reeded pattern here in the grip section. Very nice, very comfortable, not slippery because of those sort of deep reeded grooves. The nib, 18 karat gold. And this is, you know, a, a smaller nib at the time. This was the, the nib that they were using on their must pens, which were a skinnier pen. So proportionally, I think it, it does look a little bit small and it's definitely on the smaller side by today's standards. It's threaded. We have sort of a plastic part here, it is threaded, so it will unscrew. Now on some of the, the pens that they made after this, like the Cougar and the Panther, which use the same nib, they added a gold ring or a metal trim ring around the edge that made it look a little bit nicer. Although I think still overall this looks really, really nice. Now one of the interesting things about this pen, when they released it in 1986, it was cartridge only. And I believe in 89, they came out with a converter, which was a big deal. So I have a converter on here now, and it is not original to this pen, but it only fits the Cartier Pasha. You can see it says Cartier Paris here, and you can just see how fancy looking this is. This is definitely over the top. It's a screw-in converter, very nice quality, definitely beyond what I see on most other brands. Now, going to the, the cartridge, it takes a standard cartridge. Now, the way that that works, so this is the box that the converter came in. And I think later when they were making these, they had this as an option and they put that on the box like this converter was a big deal. <laughs> and you can see this is the gold color. They did do a blue and silver plated version of this pen. Now, if I can get this out here. This is the cartridge cover. So you put your standard international cartridge in there and then this screws in there uh, so you don't have to see, I guess, that ugly 
cartridge. I don't know. It's really over the top. I absolutely love that. All right, I have the instructions here for the converter, I guess. It shows you how to fill it. They, I think they, they also released a glass inkwell at the same time that they did the uh, to go with the converter. I do not have that inkwell. I'd like to have it, but I don't have it. And this is just showing you how to fill it. Let's do some measurements here. In terms of the length, we're about 141, 142 millimeters. We're at about 125, 126 millimeters. Posted, I'm not gonna post it. It's just a little, I don't wanna scratch that lacquer finish. Now, in terms of the grip section, we can see that this one really has a, a very strong taper. So going to the very front here, right before that kind of plastic collar, 8.2, and then at the end here, we're at 12, oops, sorry, 11.9. So quite a big taper there. In terms of the, the width, you know, towards the, the front, it does feel a little bit skinny. However, I do find this pen to be very, very comfortable to use. Now, in terms of the weight, so about 60 grams, pretty heavy pen. Now, I don't use it posted, so it's not too much of an issue. I don't have any issues with it being back weighted or anything. So 34 grams there uh, with the, the converter. Now, the cartridge cover is 10 grams on its own, so it's definitely not a light item. In terms of size, I'll compare it to Pilot Vanishing Point. I'm going to show it with a Cartier pen that came out a little bit after the Pasha. This is a Cougar, and you can just see how much smaller this pen is, but they use the same nib, and see with the newer ones, they added this gold section there. But anyway, it's, a full, it's definitely a very full-sized pen, very comfortable to use. I don't really have any issues with the back weighting because I don't post it. All right, so for the writing sample, I'm going to be using a PaperMind Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebook. For Blake's Broadcasts, viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. These are really nice notebooks for fountain pens. They work really, really well. Now, this is a Cartier Pasha, and this is a fine nib, and this is Cartier Burgundy, oops. Okay, let me do some fast writing. Very good um, performance. I really have no complaints about the way that this pen performs. It is very smooth. Cartier nibs are made uh, in-house by Cartier, and they are very, very smooth. This is a super nice pen to write with. In terms of flexibility, you know, it's not really designed for flex. I wouldn't push on it. It's pretty, pretty stiff. In terms of reverse writing, it seems like it can do it. It's relatively smooth. We're getting a little bit of skipping there. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. But really enjoyable to use. Cartier just makes really, really smooth nibs. You know, if you like an ST DuPont type nib, this is very similar to that. Very smooth, very nice to write with. So what are my pros and cons for the Cartier Pasha fountain pen? The biggest pro here is definitely the build quality. There just aren't that many pens that are put together this nicely. 40 layers of lacquer on the body. You have this deep, reeded, uh, gold-plated cap, cabochon. There's just, there's a lot here. They do individual serial numbers. They put the date that it was made. It's a very well-made pen. I like that the nibs are interchangeable. They're threaded. I like the way that they do their cartridge and converter. Just a very high quality, chunky, you know, over the top build to these pens. It's really, really nice. They're, it, it really feels like a luxury to use these pens just because they're made so nicely and they just 
give off such a quality feel. Uh, the nibs are really, really smooth, very nice to write with, a beautiful, beautiful pen. Now in terms of cons, this is definitely on the heavier side. It's all brass. I do not post this. It would be too top heavy and I wouldn't want to damage the lacquer. This is a fingerprint magnet. It That does drive me nuts a little bit. The nib is definitely on the smaller side compared to the rest of the pen. They put this nib on a number of smaller pens like the Cougar and the Panther, and it looks a little bit better on those pens. The nib is, yeah, definitely not maybe the most proportional. Uh, we do have a plastic collar there, which maybe doesn't look the nicest. It's a pretty minor ripe. The other downside, of course, is that they don't make these anymore. This pen is from 1988, so quite an old pen. And they're still pretty darn expensive. You know, I would expect one of these in nice condition to be in the around $1,000. So still very expensive. But that's pretty much it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. And until next time.